hey guys welcome back again for a new video and in this video we'll be talking about end-to-end -end encryption so let's look at what we'll be covering in this video so firstly we'll be looking at that why do we need end-to-end -end encryption then what are the drawbacks of some probable ways that is generating a public and private key at the client side or the server side and then finally we'll be looking at the end-to-end -end encryption scheme that is proposed by Whitefield Diffie and Martin Hellman in 1976 and the scheme proposes a solution to generate a shared secret between two clients. So now let's look at that why do we need end-to-end -end encryption. So suppose we have two users that is Alice and Bob and they both want to send a message to each other. So until and unless they are pretty close in lane range like in the NFC range, they'll be able to send messages directly to each other without using a third server or without using a third party. But in our case, we rule this out because we need we want that Alice and Bob should be able to send messages to each other even if they are in different parts of the world. So for that, we'll be needing a server. So now suppose we have a HTTP server, a plain HTTP server, and Alice wants to send a message to Bob, and in return, Bob wants to send a message to Alice. But the problem using this approach is that, that anyone in the middle can attack those messages, that is, that they can read those messages, and they can modify those messages. So now to overcome this problem, what we can do, we can change our server to use HTTPS, that is the SSL layer, and now, whatever message Alice sends to Bob is encrypted between the Alice and server and whatever message Bob wants to send to Alice is encrypted between Bob and the server but not directly between them. So what can happen is this that anyone uh, who attacks at the server or even the admin of the server can read those messages. So the messages between Alice and Bob is not secure that is they are not end to end encrypted they are only encrypted between the client and the server and server to the client. So now let's look at the second way of uh, encryption that is using the private and public keys. Now again suppose we have Alice, Bob and the server and Alice generates her private and public key pair and Bob in turn generates his private and public key pair. The way this private key and public key works is like this that Alice will encrypt her message using the private key and that can be decrypted by using the Alice's public key. So now what they will do that is Alice and Bob will exchange their public keys only while the private key remains confined to them only. So now Alice will have the Bob's public key and Bob will have the Alice's public key. If Alice wants to send a message to Bob, she can encrypt the message using her private key and then Bob can decrypt the message using the Alice's public key. So now the problem with this approach is this that anyone in the middle that is anyone at the server could get a hold of the public keys of both Alice and Bob and he can decrypt those messages which Alice sent or Bob sent. So now this uh, thing is again ruled out that using only the public and private keys won't work. So we need a solution to generate a shared secret between Alice and Bob which they can use and that shared secret should, should, not, should not pass through the server. So that is the solution that uh, Diffie Hellman proposed that again here we have Alice server and Bob and they both want to send messages to each other but using a shared secret between them and whatever is inside this public domain that that is whatever is passed through this public domain is visible to everyone but whatever is in the private domain of Alice is only confined to Alice and whatever is inside the private domain of Bob is only confined to Bob. So Diffie Hellman proposes a solution that is they proposed a solution to generate a shared secret between Alice and Bob that is generated inside their individual private domains and that shared secret key should be used to send messages between them. So now let's look at the solution that is proposed by Diffie Hellman. So here we we'll, won't be looking at the mathematical explanation but rather than we'll be looking at the logic that Diffie Hellman proposed. The mathematical explanation is a part of the next video. So here what we have is we have Alice, Bob and the server and then we have their respective domain that is the private domain of Alice, the private domain of Bob and the public domain. So whatever happens inside this public domain is visible to everyone whereas whatever happens inside the private domain of Alice is confined only to Alice and whatever happens inside the private domain of Bob is only confined to Bob. So what Diffie Hellman proposed is that that Alice and Bob both have to agree on a common key. So now let's suppose they both agree on a common key that is yellow in color and then Alice should generate her secret key that is red in color and Bob should generate his secret key that is cyan in color. And this secret key that is Alice's secret key never leaves her private domain and the Bob secret key never leaves his private domain. So now what Alice will do is that she takes the common key that is generated at the server and she mixes her secret key and this will result in the public key of Alice 
and one thing to note here is that that the generation of the public key of alice is only one way function that is with the public key and the common key you cannot get back the secret key and now similarly what bob will do she will take the common key from the server and he mixes his secret key that is cyan in color to generate his public key so now again what alice will do is that that alice will take that public key of bob and she mixes her secret key that is red in color and it will produce a new key that is pink in color and similarly what bob will do he will take the public key of alice and he will mix his secret key and it will generate a new key that is again pink in color and the mathematics behind all of this is such that that both the pink keys would be the same keys and these keys would come to be known as the shared key that they can use to encrypt and decrypt the messages between each of them so this is how the diffie hellman key exchange works or this is how the shared secret key is generated at the client send using the diffie hellman method and in the next video we'll be looking at the mathematical explanation of the generation of shared secret key using the diffie hellman method so if you have liked the video do hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to the channel do subscribe to my channel and if you want you can support me on patreon.com i'll provide a link in the description below so thank you bye bye tata take care and have a good day